Hi, and welcome to Python Fundamentals, a three-session class offered by the Clifton Park Half Moon Library. Um, each session will be one hour pre-recorded tutorial, and, um, and uh, it, it uh, is uh, accompanied by um, exercises that you can do at home that are on, through Google Classroom. And uh, 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 the three sessions will, will all be held on Thursday. And uh, let's get started. So, in today's class, we're going to cover a few things, very, very fundamental stuff about Python. Uh, we're going to cover the background and uses of Python, the loading of Python to your home computer, uh, using the Python shell command line, using the Python text editor, idle, uh, the syntax and rules of the Python language, comments, variables, data types, numbers, casting, strings, and boolean. So basically, we're going to cover how to get set up, how to how to download Python, and then <clears throat> some of the general rules of Python. And um, uh, basically, uh, learning how to use the Python shell, the command line, and also using the text editor, and some uh, data type information. So. Python is becoming one of the, the world's most popular languages. Uh, they just, um, they, it was created by a person named Rita von Rostrom. And he released his, his programming language in 1991. So the, the language has been around almost 30 years. Supposedly, Rita von Rostrom named the Python language after the popular British TV show, Monty Python. He, uh, I guess, he liked the show so much that he that he used the word Python for his for his new language. <clears throat> As of March 2020, Python is now the, now tied for second place with Java as the uh, the most pop, most used programming language. Number one is JavaScript, which is used in the majority of web pages out there on the internet. Number two is Python and Java. Uh, number four is PHP, number five is C Sharp, and number six is C++. So Python is, is just steadily moving up to become the most used programming language. <laughs> so you might be asking, why, why program in Python? Well, Python works in different, pla different platforms. Uh, it works on Windows, it works on Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, etc. Python has a simple syntax, similar to the English language. So it's very readable, it's very understandable, especially uh, for your first programming language. Python runs on an interpreter system, meaning that the code can be executed as soon as it is written. This, mean, this makes prototyping very quick and easy. Python can be treated in a procedural way, an object-oriented way, or a functional way. So it's extremely flexible and adaptable. All right, uh, general things to know about Python. Uh, the most recent major version of Python is Python 3 point something. So Python 3, and that's what we're going to be using in this tutorial. Uh, also, in this tutorial, we will be write, we will be writing Python code in, using a text editor called Idle, I D L E. It's possible to write Python in in, in an integrated development environment, an IDE, uh, such as Thony, PyCharm, NetBeans, Eclipse, um, which are particularly useful for managing larger collections of Python files. But just for beginners, <coughs> we'll be using uh, the text editor idle, which uh, when you download Python, uh, uh, it will load the text editor onto your machine so you can use it. <clears throat> All right, Python syntax compared to, uh, to other programming languages. Python was designed for readability and has similarities in the English language with influence from mathematics. 
that's why it's so heavily used with, uh, in data, data analytics. Python uses new lines to complete a command, as opposed to other program, program, programming languages, which often use semicolons or parentheses. <laughs> Python relies on indentation, using white space to define scope, such as the scope of loops, functions, and classes. Other programming languages often use curly brackets or for this purpose. But Python, we're going to use indentation. All right. So getting started with Python. <coughs> OK, so we have to, to be able to use Python, um, you have to either have your, um, you have, have had bought your computer with Python already loaded onto it, or you have to go out to python.org and download the three point whatever version is out there. But we're using Python 3. Uh, the previous version, which was used pretty heavily, was Python 2. Um, but there are some differences between the, the two um, versions. So um, one way to check to see if you have Python on your, on your machine, so for a Windows machine, you would um, you would go down to the start start um, start bar. <laughs> you would click on that, and you would run the following on the command line. So if you go down to start, I can show you on my machine. So if I click on start, and then I find the command command prompt. Right. So I'll open that up. And then it should be set to um, C colon backslash users backslash and then whatever your computer name is, mine is SBART. <coughs> and then at the prompt will be at the um, at the greater than sign. <coughs> All you have to do is type in Python space hyphen hyphen and the word version. Hit enter, and it tells me I'm using Python 3.6.1. If it, if it doesn't return anything, then you know that Python has to be installed on your computer, OK? <laughs> for those of you that are using a Mac, um, I'm using a Windows machine. But for those of you using a Mac, you want to, uh, let's see, you want to go Go to the command line or on a Mac, open the terminal and type Python space hyphen hyphen version. And that will tell you on your Mac machine whether or not you have Python. But for those people that don't have Python installed on their computer, then please go out to, and I'll type this in the idle screen on my left, go out to www.python.org. And if you go out here, I'll open it up here, uh, uh, www.python.org, hit enter. And this is a nonprofit site for Python. Uh, so the downloads are very safe. And uh, the second tag called downloads, you want to click on that. <coughs> and then you would want to click on the most latest version for Windows, which would be Python 3.8.1. Just switch on that button and it will download it for you. And that will include idle, the text editor, and the Python shell, the command line. And you'll be all ready to go to start programming in Python. All right. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about the Python shell. So since Python is, is, is an interpreted programming language, this means that as a developer, you write Python files 
uh, with an extension of .py. So whatever your file name is, .py, and that, that will hold your program. Um, you do this in idle, um, which when you run your program, um, it will execute in the interpreter, which is the Python shell, which idle on my screen, idle is on the left over here, and the Python shell is over on the right. Now, for the Python shell, um, the prompt is is at is followed by um, is uh, preceded by um, uh, three greater than signs. So you have three greater than signs, and then the prompt will be right here. <clears throat> All right. So um, once you have Python downloaded, you can go down to in the Windows machine. You would go down to Start. And you just you should either do a search for idle, I D L E. So if I do a search, I D L E, it brings up Python. Or it brings up idle, Python 3.6, 32-bit. If you double click on that, it will open up the Python shell. This the screen on my right. And then once you want to create a new program, you would in the Python shell, you would click file, a new file, and that will create a brand new idle test editor session where you can start typing in multiple lines of, of, of code. All right, so I want you to first try using Python using the, the Python shell, okay? So I'm going to drag my Python shell over here. And we'll do a few things in the Python shell first. So Python shell is the command line, meaning you can only enter one line, one command at a time, one line at a time. So why don't we try, why don't we try and enter something? So why don't you type print, oops. P-R-I-N-T, parentheses, and then we're going we're gonna to enter this, this string, which will be surrounded by double quotes. So it's hello, comma, world. Exclamation point, and a double quote, and a parentheses. Oops. There's my parentheses. All right, and then hit enter, and it prints. It does the command, which is the print command, and it prints what's inside the parentheses, which is hello world, exclamation point. All right, next, I want to try, um, try and do some math. So um, type 1 plus 1 and hit enter, and it will return 2. And lastly, type name. All right, so we're going to create a variable name equals. We we'll give it a value. We we'll give it my name, S C O T T, double quotes. Hit enter, and then we're going to do. Uh, we're going to type. Just type in. Type in name. Hit enter, and it says shot. It returns shot the string. All right, so that's that's the Python shell. That's the command line. You can enter one line at a time, followed by enter, and then it'll it'll execute that command one at a time. Now the, the idle test editor allows you to enter a whole bunch of lines at a time. All right, so I'm going to move this over. Because when when you enter information into the idle test editor, and then you save your file as a .py py for Python, and run it, it will execute you in the Python shell on the right. So you enter your program on the left in the, in idle the test editor, save it, run it, 
and when it's run, it's run by the interpreter, it's run inside the command, command line Python shell. All right? So your output will be outputted in the Python shell. And if you have any errors, they'll be in the Python shell also. So when errors are generated, they will tell you usually what line it's on and 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 what the problem is. So all your all, pretty much all your clues are going to be in the Python shell, which is on the right hand side of my screen. All right, so now now we're going to try and enter your first program in Python. So on the left, in text text um, in the text editor, idle. Uh, the way to get to idle, remember, is in the Python shell on, on my right. You go file, and then you would click on new file, and that'll produce a brand new, untitled screen ready for you to enter a program. Okay. So what I want you to enter is I want you to enter print hello so print parentheses double quote H E L L O double quote and close it with a parenthesis all right uh all right and that's it that's your program that's your first program so now in 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 idle in the text editor um the first first time you have to save it to a, to a, a new file so what you do in the toolbar, you click on run, and then you click on the third one in the in the drop down, which is run module. So it'll run the the um, the program that you are in at that at that moment. And then a pop up window will come and say before you run or check, source must be saved, okay to save. So you say okay. Okay, and then here it allows you to save your file. So on my hard drive, I'm going to create a a brand new folder. All right, I'll call it. I'm going to call it um, Python Fundamentals. All right, you might want to do the same. And put all your inf all your information from this class, all your files, save it to Python Fundamentals folder on your hard drive. All right, so uh, what, now I'm in the Python Fundamentals folder. So I go down to file name, and I'm just going to um, I'm going to call this what I'll call it hello. So h e l l o dot p y. The sensor for a py for a Python program file is always dot p y, and the save as type is Python files, so it'll save it correctly. And then I'll hit save. And if you see over in the on the Python shell, it ran the program hello.py. Right? I'm highlighting it. And the output is hello. Because over over to the left in idle, all I did was execute the print command and I told it to print hello. And that's what it did. And then it put me back to the prompt, which is just past the three graders end sign. And that is your first program. So that's how you uh, write a program in idle. That's how you save it by doing run. So if you look over on the left, remember you write your program, you click run, run module, pop up window will come up. Oh, didn't have to come up because I didn't change anything. I've already saved it, but the first time in, you'll have to um, you'll have to save the file and create a .py file. All right, and that's it. Very simple, right? All right. So real quick, I just want to go over some of the um, some of the Python syntax. All right, there's just a few rules that Python uses that might be a little bit different than other languages. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, so Python can be executed either one line at a time on the command line in the Python shell, right off to my right, 
or it can be have multiple multiple lines of code in a in a program file that you can enter in idle, I D L E idle, which is the text editor for Python. Um, Python relies heavily on indentation. Indentation are the spaces at the beginning of a line of code. All right, where in other programming languages the indentation in code is is very readable. Um, where in other programming languages, indentation in code is for readability only. That's what I meant. But in Python, indentation is a must. Otherwise, it'll throw an error. So I'll, I'll show you over in, um, in the text editor, uh, for instance, if you had a for loop for x in range, and I want to loop five times and the quote. And then inside, once I hit enter, you notice it indents inside the for loop because you have to indent the commands you want inside the loop. Otherwise, it would blow up. Okay, so indentation, which you can just have one space as long as you're consistent. You can indent just one space, two spaces, but I, I recommend tabbing at least once. Right? So you hit tab. So in Python, you want to use that tab button quite a bit. All right. So what's next? Um, Python variables. Um, in some languages, like take for instance JavaScript. Um, to define a variable, you have to you have to issue the command var, var for variable, right? So you would in JavaScript you would do var space and then the variable name. But in Python, there there are no commands that you need. But the only thing you have to do in Python is you have to you have to name the variable. So if I have a name color. So I'll name my variable color, and then you have to give it a value. I can't just have color out there because it doesn't understand what that is. But once once I make it equal, uh, I'll make it equal to blue, I give it a value, then Python knows that color is a variable name, and I, and I gave it a value of blue. All right, so that's one of the rules of Python. And then uh, another thing Python has is um, the way to use comments in Python is uh, we basically use a, a hashtag. So if I want to say, um, I'll, I'll put this up on top, but um, I would do hashtag and see how in the text editor it turns red. Um, hashtag, this is my first Python. Oops. And so, First Python program, and that's it. So a hashtag that starts the comment, and then everything you write in inside on that line should be in red to indicate it's a comment, and is not read by the Python interpreter in, over on the on the right hand side, right? Basically, the computer just ignores it. So. So those are some of the general rules about Python. And um, indentation is probably one of the biggest rules that you have to remember. All right, so let's get started with, let's start by talking about Python comments, all right? Uh, let's see, comments can be used for several reasons, all right? Comments can be used to explain Python code, right? Like I have a comment, if you look over to the left, my, my comment on top is explaining what, what this program is. And then I can even say, dash, I can even give it the um, file name. I called it hello.py. All right? So it, it, can use, it can be used by me, the programmer, the originator of the code, or say, um, say I'm at work, and uh, one of my coworkers has to has to make a change to my application. Well, 
it's going to help that person a lot if he if he has comments on what the different sections are doing, and what the overall program is supposed to do. Um, so so it it allows the program comments allow the program to be very readable. Now you don't want to overdo it with with comments and make make your um, make your program sort of messy and have too many lines of code. So you want to strike a balance between having just enough comments to make it readable for somebody else and for yourself if you come back to it months later. Um, and and the last thing it's used for is um, if you want to comment out uh, just uh, one line of the code because you're having trouble, um, you know, it keeps throwing an error or um, you're just trying to figure out, well, you know, should I should I have my code in this section, or should I move it to another section, or maybe I should do it differently? So, say if you're looking over on the left at my text editor, say I'm running my my program, but hey, I don't want to do the for loop, right? So I'm just going to pop a, a hashtag in front of it, and as you can see, now this this line is not, the Python's not going to execute this for loop. It's going to just Leave it alone. It's not even going to read it. And now I can go on and and see if my program uh, blows up beyond the for loop, or maybe my that maybe that'll tell me, hey, your problem's in the for loop. All right. So that's how you use comments. Now, uh, besides the hashtag commenting out a single line, um, there is there is another way to do it, and it's a hack. It's it's not it's not uh, not the way it's supposed to be done. But um, so I can do if I want to do um, comment out uh, you know the for loop and and the variable color, right? I can do a hashtag for every line. But another way to do it is for multiple lines of of code that you want to comment out. Another way to do it is is uh double double quote double quote double quote and the same down below you want to close it out with three double quotes and once you do that what you're trying to do is <coughs> um you're, you're trying to create a multi-line string since python will ignore string literals that are not assigned to a variable you can add a multi-line string with triple quotes and place your comment inside. So remember, a variable has to have a name, right? So I'll show you. A variable has to have member color, right? So I, I name my variable color. You have to use equal sign and give it a value, right? I give it a value of red. So, oops. So the hack is you're trying to create a multi-line string with the, the triple double quotes, right? But so th this is a two-line string inside the triple double quotes, but it's not assigned to a variable name. So Python just ignores it because it, it's like it doesn't understand. All right? So basically, stick to the hashtag if you want to do multi-line. I, I would just do hashtags. All right, next up, variables. OK. So I created, just now I created color equals red. All right. And I want you to think of variables as containers. All right, so you give your container a name. In this case, I gave it the name color. And then it's, it's followed by the equal signs. And then you have to put something in the container, right? In this case, I'm putting the color red. So unlike other programming languages, Python has no command for declaring a variable. Like I said before, like JavaScript, it has a command bar before the variable name that, that lets you define the variable. And in JavaScript, you don't have to give it a value. So in JavaScript, I would type 
I would type um, bar color, and that's it. I could give it a value there, or I could not. And, and JavaScript would recognize that as the color variable, or as the variable color. All right, so when, when thinking about variables, to think of them as containers that you have to give a name and you have to put something inside of it. All right. Oh, going back to comments, I just wanted to mention one thing. The hashtag does not have to be on the first position, like like my comment on top. It doesn't have to be in that first position. I, I should put it I should put it here after the color equals blue and say this is a variable name. Color. And you see how it turns it red in, in the idle text editor. So I just want, just want, uh, just want to uh, mention that the hashtag, wherever you place it, whatever follows it, should turn red and it will be, it will be, um, it will not be read by the computer when it's run. All right, so back to variables. All right. Okay, let's talk about variable names. All right, I use the very, I, I created the variable called color. All right, so here are the rules for variable names. Um, a variable name must start with a letter or an underscore. A variable cannot start with a number. The only characters that are allowed in, in a variable name are letters, numbers, zero through nine, and underscores, those are it. No special characters, no estimation points, question marks, no spaces. So here are some names I could do. I could do um, um, num, num2. Or I could do, um, I could do, uh, uh, um, animal underscore farm. All right, so the underscore is allowed, and the the first character has to be a letter, or it should be an underscore. That'd be kind of a weird name, underscore animal. Uh, but it's allowed. Okay, let's see. So at this point. Um, I'd like you to, you can pause the tutorial, and um, if you go out to Google Classroom, you'll see that there is a uh, variable names challenge. So uh, if you go out to it, um, I can show you. All right, the instructions are put a Y next to the names that are legal variable names in Python and put an N next to the names that are not legal variable names, all right? And there's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 of them. Okay, so like I said, you can just pause it and then go out and, and do that exercise in Google Classroom. It'll be under class number one for Python fundamentals. All right, the next thing we're going to be working on are um, assigning values to multiple variables. All right, let me get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so say, say we want to, um, we have three variables, right? So the way to assign, I want to assign um, three fruits to three variables, all right? So the fruits are gonna be orange, banana, and cherry. And the variables, in this case, let's just call them um, X, Y, and Z, all right? So what you would do, so what you would do 
is x comma y comma z equals, it was at that equals, and then the values I wanted was orange, the quotes with their strings, and then separated by commas, banana, comma, and lastly, cherry. And that's how you assign multiple values to multiple multiple um multiple variables. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this program. So I'll do I'll do print x. All right, so I'm going to print each of these variables. So if you look to the left, I've got print x, I'm printing y, and I'm printing z. And what should happen is x should have the variable orange, y should have the variable or the value of banana, and z should have the, the value of cherry. All right, so I'm going to run this. I'm still in my hello.py program, so I'll just click OK to save it. And then off to the right, you can see in the Python shell, it, pr it printed X, which is orange, Y, which is banana, and Z, which is cherry. So that's how you do multiple values, multiple va values for, for multiple variables. And so to output the value of variables, um, we use the print statement. Now, the print statement in Python is just an um, invaluable command because it's, it's how you really debug your, your programs. It's one of the best tools for debugging. So if I want to, um, sometimes we want to combine text with, with variables inside the print statement. So the format of the print statement, if you look over to the left, I have print, parenthesis, s, parenthesis. So the format is lowercase print, followed by parentheses, and whatever is inside the parentheses is what you're telling it to print. So when I have print, parentheses, s, parenthesis, like I do over here on the left, it would just print the value of x, which in this case will be orange. But say I want to add text. Um, so I want to add the string, so I'm going to do double quotes. Uh, the value of x is, and then I'll do a space, double quote. And then you have to follow it by either I use a comma to concatenate. So I want to concatenate the string, the value of x is, with the value of whatever in the variable named x. So after the string, I would do a comma, space, and then the variable name that I want to print. So when I run this, it should say the value of x is orange. All right, so I'm going to run it. So I'll do run, run module. Okay, to save it. And then if you look at my the right side of my screen, I've got at the very bottom, I've got the value of x is orange. Beautiful, right? All right, you can also use the plus sign, plus character to add a variable to another variable. All right, so what I'm going to do off, off to the left in idle, I'm going to add the value of x and z, right? So x is, has a value of orange, z has a value of cherry. I'm going to add them. I'm going to, I'm going to create a brand new variable. I'm going to call it fruits. All right. Now I'll say fruits equals x plus sign z. 
and that's it. And then below that, I have print, and we're going to print fruits. I'm going to print what the value of fruits is. And what that should be is it should be orange and cherry. All right, because that, those are the values that are now inside the variable fruits. All right, so let me run that guy. Run, run module, okay to save. And then down below on my Python shell, on the right hand side, you have orange, cherry. All right, combine them. There's no space in between. I didn't add a string for a space. Does that make sense? Okay, for numbers, the plus sign can, character can, can work as a mathematical operator. So say I have the variable, look over to the left on the idle screen, so I have the variable x equals um, 5. All right, so it equals the, the number 5, and then I have y equals 10. And now I'm going to print the combination of these two. So I'm going to print parenthesis x plus y. All right. And the output should be 5 plus 10. So the, it's going to print 15. So I run, run module. It's OK. And if you look at the bottom of my Python shell, I've got 15. So that's how you combine the values of variables when you're dealing with numbers. Now, if you try and combine a string with a number, you will get an error. So if I change x equal to 5 to be the string um, John, okay. and I'm going to combine that, I'm going to print out John plus 10. It's not going to know what to do. So I'm going to run this, and I'll show you what the error is. Okay, if you look in the Python shell, you can see the error. And it says, in module print x, x plus, print x plus y must be a string, S-E-R, not an int. All right? So you can only combine numbers, or you can combine strings. But you can't combine a number with a string. Python just doesn't like it. All right, the next next part of this tutorial, we're going to talk about data types. All right, and I'm not going to cover all the data types in Python. Um, I'm going to cover the most uh, commonly used. All right, so the first one is a string. All right. If you look over to the left, I've got the string John, all right? It's surrounded by double quotes. You can also surround it by single quotes. You just have to be consistent. I, I use double quotes uh, throughout my, my Python programs. Um, but, but you could surround John with a single quote on both ends. I can find it. But, you can't have a single quote in the beginning of John and a double quote at the end of John. You'll get an error when you do that. But you can use single quotes to surround the string. I like to use double quotes, so. All right, so there's strings, there's numerical types or numbers, and uh, in Python, the, the three types are int for integer. Those are whole numbers, right? So y equals 10. So 10 is a whole number. That's an int. That's an int integer. Um, but if I made 10 uh, to 10.25, that would be a float. There's a float that has a decimal. And the last one is complex, but um, I'm not going to go into using complex. And then, then we have something called Boolean. Right, so I can say, uh, uh, play equals the Boolean true. So it's a capital T, lowercase r u e. And see how it changes color in the idle screen. 
So um, it turned orange. And I say, don't play equals false. So Boolean is just true or false. In Python, they're, they're spelt out. Um, you don't surround them with double quotes like the string, like John up here. And um, you capitalize the first letter. So the T in true is capitalized, the F in false is capitalized. All right. All right. So we have strings, we have numbers, ints, and floats. And we have Boolean, which is true and false. And uh, uh, later on in the tutorial, in, uh, in the second or third session, we'll be going over um, uh, data structures, which in Python are lists, dictionaries, tuples, and sets. So those four data structures, they're data types, but they're, they're, they're more structured than the string and the numbers and the Boolean. And we will be covering those later on. So for data types, you you can get the you can find out the data type of any object by using the type function. So if you look over my idle screen, I have x equals John. So I'm going to add a line below that. And I'll, all you have to do is type enter the function name type, surrounded by parentheses, and then you just put x. I want to know what type x, x is, the variable x is. And if I run it, run, run module. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. All right. So run, run module. I shouldn't get an error now. And okay, so uh, to get the type of X, which is a string, I would print and surround by parentheses, type parentheses X. So you call the function named type. And I'm passing in the variable of x, which will tell me what type the value of x is. So it should return str, which stands for string. So if I run this, so run, run module, OK. And then if you look at the bottom, it says class string. All right? Now, if I want to do the same thing with y, what do you think it will return? So if I do a print and I ask for the type, call the function type, but this time I'm going to pass in y instead of x. So it should return a float, right? It's 10.25, it has a decimal. And when I do a run, so it says class string for the, for the x, um, the x value of John, but then at the bottom here, I have class float. So y is a float. And then the last one I will do is the Boolean. So I'll say play. I'll pass in play instead of instead of x, right? Get rid of these guys. And now this should be turned bool, boolean, bool. So class bool is what it returns for, for the variable, the value of the variable play. Okay, so let's let's talk about um, let's talk about numbers first. The first type of uh, the first data type. 
And like I said before, we're going to be dealing with int, integers or float, um, which are, are decimal numbers. And let's see, variables of numeric types are created when you assign a value to them. So if I have a variable, I'll call s, and I give it the value of 1. That is going to be an int. Right? If I have a variable named y and I give it a value of 2.8, that is a float. All right? So, talking about numbers and integers. So, if I had, I create a variable called y and I give it a value of uh, 3, uh, 3, 1, 4, 3. That is still an int, right? Because it's a whole number. And then lastly, if I have a variable named z and I give it a value of negative 356 that is still an int just because it's negative it's still a whole number all right so now the number of float data type uh, float or floating point number is a number positive or negative containing one or more decimals. So x can be 1.10, y should be 1.0, and z should be equal to negative 35.59. Those are all examples of floats. So if you tried, tried to get the type of X, Y, or Z, it would return float. So with int and float, you can, you can convert from one type to another. So if you look over in my, on the left side on my idle screen, I have variable X equal 1, variable Y equal 2.8. And so I want to convert. So I will convert A. So I'll create the variable A and I'll make it equals. And so I want to convert from int to float. So I'll do float and I will pass it S, which is an int. All right, so that's converting into float. Let's see what that turns out to be. So, so the x, the value of x is one. So if I'm going to convert it to float, it should should uh, return. Well, I have to do a print. So I'll do a print. A print a. To see what its new value is. It should return 1.0, a float value. And that's what it does. If you look at the bottom of my Python shell, it returns 1.0. All right, so let's just convert a float to an int. So if I have the variable b, and each well is int, and I'm going to pass it y, which is a float. And I will print that out. Print, print C's B, print C. And let's see, what should that be? So I'm I'm converting 2.8 into an integer. So I don't know if it rounds up. Let's find out. It might be three. The number three. Uh, nope. 
It doesn't round up, so it just returns the number two. So it converted the float 2.8 into an integer, which is just the number two. So it only takes the, the whole number part when converting to, a, to an integer. All right, so next, let's talk about Python casting. All right, so there may be times when you want to specify a type on a variable. This can be done by casting. In Python, it uses functions, int, float, and um, str, string, to basically cast the, the value of a variable. All right, so if you look at my idle screen, I've got x equals, and I'm using the, the function int, to cast the value of, of x. So x equals int, parenthesis, one, parenthesis. And what that would return is it will return, it's already an integer. So I'm casting something that's already an integer. So it will return one. Next, look at, look at um, the next example is y equals int 2.8. Now, 2.8 is a float type. So what it will return is it will return two, all right? Because you're casting it as an integer by using int in front of it. And then the last one is z equals int parentheses double quote three double quote. So I'm I'm taking the number three as a string, and that will return the number three because I'm casting it as int. So it takes a string and converts it to an integer. So let's run this. I'm gonna print X, I'm gonna print Y, and I'm gonna print Z. And it should um, output one, two, and three. And if you look at my Python shell on the, on the right-hand side, I've got one, two, and three. So next, let's, um, let's do the same with float. All right, so I'll change int to float so I'm casting these variables I'm casting the type on these variables so I'll change all these and remember float has one one or more decimal places so um, you know think about what what is x going to return when I print it out so I'm doing float on one, so it should return 1.0. Next for y, y 2.8 is already a float, so it should return 2.8. And z should return instead of three, you know, the string three, it'll, it'll convert it into 3.0. So let's see if I'm right. So I'll run my module, open, and the Python shell 1.0, 2.8. And 3.0, just like I said. Okay, so the, the last casting is um, you know, we covered int, we covered float, and we're going to cast a string. All right, so. Um, so x, I'm going to make x equals str. So I'm calling the function str. Oops. And parentheses, and we have double quote s1, double quote. So s1 is already a string, it's surrounded by double quotes. So this should output the string s1, just like it is. Now y, y is an integer too. So I'll call the string function str. Oops. Y. Now this should return double quotes, the number two double quotes. So it returns the string number two. And Z, I will do the string of 3.0. So 3.0 is a float type. I'm converting it to string, so it'll It'll output double float, 3.0 of double float. 
All right, so run, run module. And if you look over to the right, it says it returns S1, the string, 2, the string, and 3.0, the string. So that's it for casting. Um, you might not use it a whole lot, but um, just to let you know, that, you know, there's ways to convert the, the, the data in the data type. Um, and, and the final thing I want to talk about for as far as numbers go is, so for random, uh, Python has a built-in module called random that can be used to make random numbers, all right? Video games use uh, the random function, or, or in, in Python, say, some random module all the time to, to pick numbers, to pick choices uh, randomly, to have the computer generate those choices instead of the, uh, the player or the, the user. So the way to use the random module is you have to, you have to um, type in import, so I uh, looked over in the Python shell or, um, in the idle screen. I typed import space and then the word random. You're, told, you're importing the whole random library for your use. So import random. And then I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to print a random number that's generated by the computer. So I'll do print instead of Z. I'll do print. Random, so I call the library random dot, and then I call a function in that library rand range, and rand range has a couple of different um, arguments. So I'll do one comma ten. Print C. All right. So let's see what this generates. So I'll run it. Run the module. It generated the number eight. And okay, so the computer generated the number eight. I run it again, it generated the number four. If I do a run one more time, it generated the number six. So if you look at my print statement, I'm calling the random library dot, and then I'm calling the library's function called rand range, and it's passing in the number one, right? So that's, <laughs> it's, um, it includes the number one and goes up to the number 10. If I, if I said number one and I change 10 to uh, 66, and I, I run this, this random number generator, it produced 11. And so it would, it, would, you, it would pick random numbers from 1 to 66. And you should make this uh, number as high as you want it to go. Or if I, I wanted to say I didn't want anything to be generated that was below 25, right? Then the first number, the first argument that you're passing would be 25, and no numbers greater than 66. So I would run a module, and it is 56. So it falls in that range, right? So the RAND range is, is a function that's just, um, you know, it's, it's the role in the random library that, that um, allows you to, uh, to uh, have the computer pick a number between a certain range. So, um, so we're going to wrap it up tonight and um, uh, go out to Google Classroom. And, and um, there'll be uh, several exercises out there for you to do during the week. And uh, you can just play back this, uh, this video if you're stuck on any parts of it. And, um, you know, this was a lot of fundamental things about Python, and we'll be going into, uh, we'll step it up a little uh, next class, next week. And um, uh, feel free to contact me through Google Classroom if you have any questions, and um, I can help you out with any problems you have. All right, so have a good night, and I will talk to you next time.